You need to put your seatbelt on. Thanks, Mom. I didn't know. You know, I thought my mom died about 10 years ago. I didn't realize that my mom was going to be with us in the car today. It is pretty dark in here. I don't know how well we're going to show up. Were you scared of the dark but, as a kid? Um, I kind of was. I didn't like being alone in the house. And I remember when my mom and dad would go out and my brothers and sisters weren't there. And I was kind of alone, like maybe 10 years old. I'd turn on every light in the house. And then my dad would get home and he'd say, yeah, damn it, you turn on every light in the house. I'm like, yeah. Dad was, uh, he was born during the Depression, so everything was like, you know, you had to save this and reuse this. And you want to hear something disgusting? Mm -hmm. We busted him reusing Kleenexes. Okay. He would blow his nose and set the Kleenex, still somewhat usable, next to the uh, Kleenex box. So, so I'm thinking your parents are probably close to the same age as like maybe my grandparents. Probably. Because... Yeah, my dad would be, he would be 100 this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, my grandma is in her 80s. When I go to her house, instead of Tupperware container, she has like the country crock butter container yes, yes, that yes. she uses. She still, like, all the scraps she puts in a bucket, and my, her husband, O.C., takes them out to their dogs. They're we did not have garbage disposal growing up, so we could not throw garbage down the sink, like food scraps mm -hmm. off a plate or whatever. So we would have to pick them out. The yeah. chicken bucket, that's what we the called chicken. it. Ours and we would swapped, take it yeah. out to the chickens and feed it to the chickens. We didn't have chickens on my dad's farm, but my great grandma would like literally just chop a chicken's head off and they'd still run around with their head chopped off. Yeah, they would. They would that, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that was awful. What do you think is the biggest misconception <sighs> about being a radio DJ. That we all talk like this. And like, hey, Jimmy Fallon, that was one of the funniest bits ever, ever when they would do the radio bit on SNL. He's like, ah, and we're back. That was kind of funny. Why do you like Jimmy Fallon so much when he's such a hack? <laughs> Jimmy Fallon seems like someone you could go out with and like, no matter what you did, you would have the best time ever. I think the real Jimmy Fallon is a, hi, hey, how are you? Because when he is this outgoing, bubbly character it doesn't seem genuine to me but don't you agree that everyone even like the people on radio stations that claim we're real we're real all the time they're kind of amped up a little bit yeah. because no one would want to hear debbie downer and when i try to say like i'm on people are like oh are you different off the radio and it's like no you're a smaller version of you off the radio. Right. But if you were like that off the radio, you'd drive everybody crazy. The same thing with me. We I'm, like the house. I'm the same person. We're in beautiful Golden Valley right now. You can see why they call it Golden Valley. Why? Because it's like being in a Golden Valley. Anyway, <laughs> if I was annoying as I am on the radio and as arrogant as I am on the radio all the time, yeah. um, I would piss everybody off. People say, God, Dave Ryan sounds like an asshole. And it's like, no, I'm just kind of having fun. What infuriates you more? Go fund me pages. <laughs> <laughs> or, or when people say things like, why do you why do you run off all of your female co-hosts? Oh my God, it really annoys me when people say, why do you run off all your female co-hosts? I mean, they leave for a better job. I, why do you think that they think that about because, because you? It's, because they don't know how the business works. I think if you asked every one of them, they would say, Dave really gave me a great opportunity. Yeah. I like giving people an opportunity. I like giving people a chance. Mm -hmm. KDWB opens so many doors right. for people because people look at KWB, which is known nationwide, right. and they say, oh, you worked at KWB, you'd be great for our show. Why have you stayed here so long then? I, oh, I'm getting after this. I um, Those are so good. What is it? Try it. You, you won't, you just, just, you gotta try it. Does it disappear? It does. I'm kind of um, annoyed. I don't like this. It's like gum that disappears, gum, yes. When I wanted gum. You get used to However, it. However, my breath is less skanky. What were you asking me a minute ago? I'll tell you because I had moved around a couple of different stations, then I went to Phoenix and I got fired twice. I like being here. I like being in a place that's not going to change formats. I like being in a station where they, you know, treat me well and I don't have to worry about being fired. I just, I, I, I like it here. Chicago or New York or St. Louis or something like that. But what if I don't like it there? What if I don't like the radio station? Why do you think you've been so successful in Minneapolis? Probably because I, of the people you've surrounded yourself I, with. I think that's true. It's, and I think... It goes back to, I'm not afraid to surround myself with people who really can shine. The show's not just about me, because mm -hmm. I'm not that interesting all the time. I'm interesting 85% of the time. I don't think that's an accurate uh, percentage. I'm going to say you're interesting 37% of the time. 30, why, what, what's the... Well, it's easy for me to say, like, a Carson thing, or like a kid thing, or like something like that, because 
I don't have kids, so I don't have interest in it. But I also know that a lot of people listening to our show do have kids. But then you speak for the people who are bored for it. When you're like, I don't want to hear about cars and stories, you are giving a voice to the people who are like, I don't give a shit about cars and stories. And then Steve, he's like, I don't know, he's an idiot. So, I mean, he gives a voice to the idiots <laughs> that listen <laughs> to awful. the show. And there are so many idiots that listen to our show, and they have a voice now. They do. Why are you funny? Why do people think you're funny? I feel like I am not afraid to say um, maybe gross or um, things that don't make me look like um, a perfect girl. Yeah, you say things like a lot of radio people won't. Right. It's kind of like if you had a friend, but they would never reveal anything personal about themselves. Fallon, on the other hand, reveals won't too much. Did too much. When she <laughs> talked about how she had hemorrhoids and it looked like there's a bundle of grapes hanging out of her butt cheeks, nice. what treatment did you use for your hemorrhoids? Preparation H suppositories. This is what happened. I made Paul go buy them because I did not want anyone to see <laughs> buy them. And I cannot do this. It's not, it shouldn't be a big deal, but yeah. I could not do it. And honestly, they just eventually, I know they're never completely gone, but they just, this is such an example of hideous stuff. Um, they did actually just go away. They just go away, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. but it was awful. We are going to go get delicious Subway, which is funny because you're on the Beyonce diet this the week. The vegan diet, so I have, oh, of course the road's closed. I'm supposed to be eating vegan pre-made meals, <laughs> which they have been only okay. The breakfast is the best part and it's still not very good. I am going to order a vegetarian salad which I've never done at Subway. God knows that's the truth. Hi. Is that how you walk into places? I know exactly what I want. I'm going to get a foot long uh, steak and cheese on flatbread. Have you tried the delicious steak and cheese? Um, you get it melted. They melt it and then they, they put other things on there. Uh, like vegetables and things like that. Do you ever eat vegetables, Alan? That's all I'm eating this week. Really? That noodles and rice. Okay. You can tell from the the video in the car that I'm eating plenty. Um, Fallon looked at the video that we took in the car a little while ago and she's really upset about the, <laughs> angle. the angle of your chin. It, it basically I don't have a chin in it. I have one, I look like a Nutty Professor character. I'm like in a Nutty Professor fat suit. <laughs> I think you look adorable. Does she look adorable? Don't start. What are you going to eat? I'm, I'm going to do a salad. Cucumbers, tomatoes, green peppers, some onions. And so let me get this right. So you can pick all the different things that you want on your salad here at Subway. You get to pick all like all of these different fresh, delicious ingredients. Fresh veggies. So you get to pick all of these yourself uh, and get dust finish. Lettuce, tomato. So let me ask you a personal question. Okay, you say, I'm not a foodie, I'm a fatty. Yeah. Where a lot of people would be like, I don't ever talk about my weight, I don't want to talk about it, which I understand. Why are you, oh, because if I ever mention to most people, you know, like Steve and I make fun of you, it's like, oh, Fallon, blah, 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 and you kind of roll with it. Yeah. But a lot of people, you just don't. If someone I don't know did it, then I'd be like, the hell are you, you don't know me. Just like, don't people write to you and say, Fallon. I've got a great diet you should try. Every you ever day. get that? Every, every day? I swear, every day someone tells me about a diet solution. Here's a new wrap. Hey, you're my size. Maybe you have sleep apnea. It's for overweight people. Like, I get all this. I'm like, first of all, and sleep just... apnea is not for overweight people. So um, I started it as, I think a, what a lot of people do when you're younger. You do it as a defense mechanism. Beat them to the, beat them to the joke. Right. So, and also with you guys. I know I know that there's always a little bit of truth to any joke, right? But I know I know I'm not like completely over overweight, so maybe it's easier for me to joke about it. Right, right. But I do not like necessarily enjoy the fact that I am, but I just I figure laugh about it. People say all the time it's like, oh Fallon and I could be BFFs because I mean a lot of people do wish they weighed. 10 pounds less or 20 pounds less or whatever. Not me, because I feel like I'm at my ideal weight right now. You are ideal. Yes. You're like, so, you could be an Abercrombie model. Watch, watch. What do you love about meat sauce? Well, I prefer a meat sauce with an actual meat in it. Uh-huh, yes. I don't know, it just adds something extra to your spaghetti noodles. I'm talking about your husband, Paul Meat oh, Paul. Sauce Lambert. Paul. Is he funny? Is because, I mean, because you couldn't be with a guy who's not funny. Paul is, well, he's first... 
funny. That's what drew me to him initially. But he is like the most positive, supportive person ever. So anything I say, he thinks is hilarious. He thinks it's a great idea. I know he's always there for me. Anything I need, he would do for me or help with. And I don't know. I guess I think I grew up not asking for things from anyone. And now I have someone I can ask for and I'm in a, I can depend on him. You and I are like that way and that we both have a spouse that is really supportive and mm -hmm. really goes out of their way to make life easier for us because Susan does the same thing. Because um, I complained about how busy I am. I said, I need a personal assistant. She yeah. says, what do you need done? Yeah, I'll, I'll do, do it. it. I'm like, oh, we got to take these videotapes down to Costco and get them made into DVDs. <laughs> well, idiot. I'll do that. Yeah. Why did you pick Susan? She got so pregnant. Mm. She got so pregnant. No. Um, I'm like, that didn't stick you to the other ones. Hey, no. Oh. Slow down. All right. Camera operators <laughs> need to be quiet. <laughs> Who's our camera operator over here, Mike? Can you? Oh, dude, there's a surprise. Give us what? a cackle. Give us a cackle laugh. No. Come on. He will not perform for you. He's off the air. Um, this is the thing with, with Susan that I really love, is that there's no drama. We can each live our lives because we don't create drama for the other person. Mm -hmm. If and, and I think it's really true. Sometimes it might seem a little bit boring to be mar married to somebody who's not full of drama. But I'd rather have less drama than have somebody with who is like always had something going on, a lot of drama. Um, because I think that that's who you end up divorcing is somebody who you can't take their drama anymore. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I like that. Speaking of. Crazy bitch. Hey.